what's up my little group of online reactor friends how you doing um so my name is kyle and if you don't know every weekend i upload a video that i've watched of a movie that i've never seen before usually one with a reputation of sorts something that i should have probably watched by now but just never got around to watching it i don't know why for this week i'm watching the grudge I really don't know anything about this movie. Um, I watched One Missed Call, the Japanese version, a little while back, and one of the pa the patron who recommended that actually recommended this movie as well, and I was like, huh, you know, I really haven't seen The Grudge, so I should probably get on that, because I know that it was like a big deal for a while there. Um, I know that it has Buffy in it, I know that it's a horror movie, and I know that it's called The Grudge. That's really the extent of my knowledge of this movie. But yeah, if you like this or you like me, give me a like. Talk to me down in the comments or hit me up on Discord. Link in the description down below. And if you want to see more of my face every weekend, hit subscribe. Uh, the full version, if you want to grab some popcorn, grab a snack, curl up in bed and sit along and watch with me, is also in the description down below along with the TV shows I watched. Wow, that was one heck of a long thing to do. All right, let's actually just watch the movie. Let's go. Come on. When someone dies in the grip of a powerful rage, a curse is born. The curse gathers in that place of death. Those who encounter it will be consumed by its fury. So you could say that the curse is holding a grudge. What's he gonna do? They are not really gonna start off the movie with him just like throwing himself over the railing, are they? No. No! Oh my god! I think I'd run away. If I saw that actually happen in real life, I don't think I would stick around to see what's going on. I'd run. We obviously are in some Asian country. I'm gonna say Japan because I know that the original was a Japanese film. Out for a walk back later. It's good Jenna. to see you again. Someone in the house? Something in the house? No. Nope, 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 nope. My first instinct, someone is hiding and waiting for me in the closet. I'm noping it out of there. Oh, Lord, girl, why would you do this? You ever hear that, like, urban legend of someone who's living in your house without you knowing it? I'm sorry. I apologize for that, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I was just not ready. I was not ready. Um, anyways, we're back. I backed it up just a little bit so we can catch uh, that moment again. And I'm ready for it now. I totally did not see it there. Oh, Jesus. I don't even... Oh. I didn't see it that it was already in the frame. Just kind of like obscured by the dark. Note to self, dude, if you have to smell them, they're past date. Huh! He was actually in an episode of Buffy. Karen? Yes, Alex? Just make sure she has what she needs and help out around the house. It's Yoko's case, but uh, she didn't show up for work this morning. <laughs> What's this face? Oh, uh, that's um, severe. Lethargy with mild dementia. She's right to be like, give him that side eye because, okay, I was a home health aide for a while um, before I worked in a nursing home. And someone with severe lethargy, I don't think you'd ever hear it said like that. You, they'd say something like, 
non-ambulatory or something like that, but someone who can't walk, has severe dementia, and uh, is living by themselves, or living with just uh, one other person, her daughter, um, or granddaughter, I didn't catch that, sorry. That's going to be a lot to take care of. Like, that's just another way of saying that um, they can't do anything for themselves. So you have to be everything. Don't worry, Karen. You're ready. You know the most realistic part of all of this? Them just giving her a piece of paper and s sending her to the house. So what happened in this house, I'm assuming it's this house, to create the grudge? Hello? Is anybody here? Are you all right? Come here. My name's Karen. Karen Davis. I'm from the care center. No one in their right mind would wear a white shirt to a job like this. Hello? Is Yoko still alive? The fuck? Is it a cat? Sounds like a cat. <laughs> Who's holding the cat? Oh my god, it's a kid. you not called the police where did the kid go what did you do with him all right so that's the guy who jumped off the balcony something is watching her Kids are always so creepy. I wonder if this Jennifer girl was gone previous to the movie starting. Because so far we've been told that like she's just out and she's going to come back or whatever. But she's clearly not there. And then we see the picture with her. I'm guessing her, I don't know, um, face burned out of it. So I'm thinking that whoever this Jennifer person is, they are no more. But I could be wrong. Uh-oh. What's that? What's going on? What is that? Oh god, it's gonna be the face again! Oh, back in time. Okay. Perfect for mom. She won't even have to deal with the stairs. What is she looking okay? at? Yeah. Hey, Mom, you all right? Mom? Okay, so I know I'm pausing a lot, but it's only because, like, <laughs> the similarities to some of this is just, it's making me remember things, so I'm going to talk about them, and you know what? I'm just going to say, so I can't, obviously I can't give names or anything like that, but there was one time, so here's a little story time, because... <laughs> 
I'm just thinking what would I do in this situation, and in all honesty, I probably would have died. So, um, there was this one time where I had, um, I don't know, it had, I think it was, it was really early in the morning. It had, I was on third shift and it was like two or three o'clock in the morning and I got a call, call light, um, from one of the patients, um, not patient, um, residents in the, um, nursing home and you know, she was normally just like very average, very normal. So anyways, I go into this room and you don't turn on the lights. Like you usually just prop open the door so the light from the hallway can kind of come in. And you've gone into these rooms a thousand times. So you usually know where everything is. Um, so you don't turn on the lights. And I went into her bedroom and I turned on the bathroom light so that could kind of show in and, you know, she could see that I was there. Um, and she was just sitting up in her bed, staring directly at the wall. And you'd like, this was very uncommon behavior for her, completely uncommon. So I asked her, like, what did she need? And, you know, she just said that she's hearing this voice and she can't get to sleep because it keeps like waking her up. And... We ended up, me and um, the other caregiver on shift ended up actually like sitting with her for I think like 10 or 20 minutes because there's not a lot to do at three o'clock in the morning um, and just like, you know, calming her down because she was clearly not, not disturbed, but just, um, she wasn't calm. <laughs> she was not like feeling what was happening. So we let her go um, and then we left the room. And, um, like not five minutes goes by and we're getting another call to come back to the room. And she says the exact same thing that she's hearing voices when she tries to go to sleep. Um, and like just some context, me and this other caregiver, when we're going in, cause we do this like for the next two hours, um, just going in and out of the room constantly you know at one point we offered if she wanted to come down to the main office and just like talk with us for a while um or whatever but we did this for like two hours and all we're doing is going back and forth into this room in pure darkness with this woman not pure but very very like very dark and this woman is just like sitting up in bed saying that she's hearing these voices when she tries to go to sleep and she's staring at this blank wall so I am just I am like very very confident that I would have died in this movie like dead I would have been dead as disco anyways that's just a little bit of my life little story time for me let's let's get back to things Is he going to be the next one to die? Is it black? I can't tell. It might be just water and it looks black. <sighs> he's going to put his hand in. Oh god, he's going to something's going to grab him. <gasps> oh no! <laughs> we'll take it. Okay. <sighs> Someone died in this house. You just know it. Someone died in this house. You know, maybe you should say something to the, uh, to the helper. What's her name? Yoko. Maybe she can suggest something. Hey, kiddo, you okay? Jen? This will get easier soon. I promise. I want some ramen now. Don't follow the footprints. If you do follow the footprints, grab a knife from the kitchen. The cat did not make the footprints. Who's there? Oh my God, run! Girl, girl. Oh, I 
I'm pretty sure she dead, dude. Oh, she's paralyzed. What? Oh, it's gonna come down from one of the corners of the ceiling, isn't it? What? <laughs> oh, I just didn't know! This cat! The oh, no! Not a cat! Not a cat! Not a cat! Dad? Karen? Last time we saw Karen, she was not doing so hot, so... Oh my god, is she dead? Oh, she dead. Karen? Oh... She's very shaken. We would like her to stay in the hospital tonight under evaluation. Karen's a substitute. Yoko's the girl who's normally in charge of Emma. Hey guys, it's Susan. Matt, are you there? Scott. Thursday, 8, 27 p.m. End of messages. Motion, we move to You know what's strange? Usually ghosts are trying to like lead you to something. This one just seems mad as hell and like it's not gonna take it anymore. Oh, she dead. Oh, they both dead. Well, he's there at least. It's okay, I've got you. Does she remember seeing what she saw? If it goes after her outside the confines of the house, then I feel like it has less to do with the house and more to do with the family. Finally, someone that doesn't walk towards the scary thing. Matthew. Matthew? Oh god, are the lights gonna go out floor by floor? Go down! Down, down, go down. Never mind, don't go down. Um, I don't know. Let go. Jukai, Jukai, um, Kaidan. I guess going to the police really wouldn't help. Like, I know, I, I've said it several times now. Why aren't they calling the police? Why are they doing this? The, 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 the. But from our perspective, we know that it's some kind of like spirit, ghost, demon, poltergeist kind of thing. Um, and now that she actually has gone to, I, I'm guessing this is like building security. Um, like, what could they really do? So, I mean, I guess you're kind of just screwed. Hey, what do you do? I don't know. Oh god, that's just ten times more terrifying. Okay, here we go. It's gonna get her. Cameras go out, room goes dark, she goes dead. Uh-uh. Yep. What? What? What What are we looking for? What are we seeing? Oh. Uh, yep, it's, it's, it's coming for you, girl. I'm sorry, I don't know what to say. You're, you're dead. Oh! Oh God. You know, if there's one thing horror movies have really taught me, it's just how often I go into a dark room by myself without a thought in the world as to what's in there. 
I don't know. See, in this situation, I get home, I'm putting on something cute and fluffy on the TV and turning all the lights on in the house. Hello? Hey, it's me. Matthew. Are you alright? No. Not him. What number are you again? 1601. I'll buzz you in. Oh, we're gonna see something through the peephole. Mm -mm. Oh, it looks like him. But I mean, we know it's not. I don't know what you're up to. Oh, God. The covers are supposed to protect you. The covers are magic. Oh, no, 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 ah, Jesus, no! What did this family do? About the Japanese boy you said you saw there. Did you find him? No, not yet. Did you speak with the boy after you opened the curtain? Briefly. I asked his name. He said it was Toshio. We found this in the hallway. Oh, that's right. There was this picture, and it's clearly a Japanese family. But Matthew and Jennifer were American. So here's the thing. Were the bodies they found three years ago more victims of the curse or the original curse? Or the original bodies that started the curse? And I want to know how this all ties into the guy going over the balcony in the beginning. I think I saw something in that house. So she does remember what she saw then. There are a lot of jump scares in this movie, but they're very good at, like, building the tension and then even prolonging it afterwards. So they don't feel like jump scares. <laughs> like, I genuinely feel really uncomfortable right now. Why well, must people do things in showers? Oh. oh god, do you know how big of a- that's like, mm, we all know that you gotta like wash your eyes or wash your hair real fast and get the soap out of your eyes so that you can't like get killed. Like you can only have your eyes closed for 10 seconds or the demon's gonna get you. Yoko? her jaw. Father kills wife and child. American professor throws himself off building. Right? I need to ask you a few questions about your husband. This is all his stuff from school. Is that the woman that she kept seeing? The spirit thing, it takes the form of... I am so confused. Stalker? Or already the spirit? She says she used to be in one of my classes, but... I don't know who the hell she is. So, stalker. Yeah, thanks. I'll meet you up. You know, it just dawned on me that we technically saw this kid, like, kind of looking alive when Buffy found him. Or did the police say that it was a murder-suicide and the kid died too? Okay, never mind. No. Mm -mm. It's trying to get you to go back to the house. It's just trying to get you to go back to the house. It's not really him. 
Oh, never mind. Okay, it is really him. Mom's gonna be late, huh? Or is it like two moments in time that are kind of colliding with each other? Okay, so not an affair. Just a stalker. This lady had some issues. I am ready for whatever is coming. Oh, there it is. Oh, I forgot about you. It's taken one of you. Pretty sure it's taken him. Punch her in the face, see what happens. So they both died, and the curse is just going to attach itself to someone else. <gasps> oh no, she's alive! Why is that one girl just standing there in the corner like that? I really don't see anyone making it alive away from this curse. Mm. Is that it? Is that it? Is it done? Is it done? Yeah, I, I, I knew it. No one was making it alive. <sighs> so that was my reaction to um, The Grudge. Whew. I... <clears throat> <laughs> that movie was a lot, guys. Like, oh, wow. Okay, yeah, that was a lot. That was just a lot to take in. Um... And I don't just mean, like, emotionally a lot. They threw a lot of information at you, and they kept, like, twisting and turning and winding and weaving, and I just... My brain was having a difficult time keeping pace with everything that we were being, like, kind of led through. Um, like, very first scene, the guy jumps off a balcony. They're setting up a mystery... And it really didn't resolve itself until the re like right end of the movie. Um, and I wouldn't even say like it resolved itself throughout the movie. Like the entire movie was a setup for the final act where we see the flashback. And that lasted for what, like a minute or two? Um, so I had so many theories, like, flowing around in my head, like, did this happen? Did that happen? How much of the narrative can we trust is actually true? How much of it is what has kind of been fed into, or not fed into, but fed through kind of like a sanity filter? Um, because, so, one thing that I had a hard time kind of wrapping my head around at for the most part of it, but here's, I'm going to get, tell you what I think. I don't think this, I don't think the ghost or spirit, I, I, I don't, I don't, want to, oh, I don't even want to say ghost. I don't think the spirit was a representation of the wife who had died, um, or had been killed by her husband. I think that the spirit was just 
like a manifestation of emotion in that time. And the reason that I say that was because it took the form of so many people. Usually, like spirits, you know, in movies, they tend to stick to the form of the person who they died as. Um, and this was just like, you know, it was the little boy, both dead and alive. It was the, um, prof or not the professor, the uh, Matthew dude, both dead and alive. Um, it just, it seemed like, you know, it was just whatever it needed to be. And that's because I don't think it was actually any one person. I think it was just evil um, or emotion. Uh, and then one kind of thing that really threw me off was at first I thought, well, it has to do with the house, right? And we didn't know at first who, they threw a lot of names at us. We didn't know who Jennifer was at first. So when they first showed us the picture with the wife's head cut off, I assumed that that was a picture of Jennifer. It turned out it wasn't. Um, and then you I kind of assumed that after that the ghost the the spirit had something to do with Jennifer's family because it was going after um her and Matthew I think her name was Susan the sister and it went after the sister even outside of the house so then I thought okay this must have something to do with the family and not the house uh, but then it actually kind of did a 180 and it's not so much that, I mean, it did have something to do with the family, but it was because of the house. You know, we eventually learn that it's just really going after anyone who comes into that house and comes into contact with it. Um, <clears throat> so there was definitely just a lot of misdirection in this movie and I really liked it because it kept you at a very heightened sense of tension. Um, like I said, I mean, several times throughout this movie, I just jumped, you know, the first time I jumped, I took out the entire desk that I have in front of me. Um, but several times throughout this movie, I jumped and it was full of jump scares. Yes, but I just, they didn't feel like jump scares. They felt like climaxes, like ex escalations, but the tension was always there. Um... So, you know, even though you might have, like, had a jump scare, you never got to come down from it, if that makes sense. It was just ratcheting it up more and more and more. Um, and the use of the sound, that creaky voice that you can make, uh, <sighs> that was definitely something. I think what really kind of did me in with this movie was after Susan was attacked, when I realized, you know, it kind of just like got in my head, there's nothing they can do. There's no way they're getting out of this. Anyone who this thing sets its eyes on is dead as disco, just dead. Um, you know, that really kind of made me think of um, the last film I watched um, like this, uh, One Missed Call, where one of the characters in that movie does all of the smart things. You know, they go into a crowded place, they're around a bunch of people, and they still die. I'm getting that that might be, like, a theme in Japanese horror, um, is that you just die. Like, you know, you, you just die. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, it was just, it was a very good movie. More of the misdirection was definitely that... Um, the story behind the original family. It was introduced in such a way, like we were given so little information um, as to, you know, a mother and a father and a kid died in the house. Now, this is what I meant when I said that you weren't sure if things were being put through like the sanity filter. My first thought was, was this really the original family that died or was it the ghost or spirit already present and that is what took them out and that created a whole bunch of questions in my mind in terms of the final part of this movie was just like you know was what was what were we going to see 
you know, what exposition were we going to get? Especially because then it threw in the, um, the twist of that the wife was really like a stalker who was obsessed with the professor. Um, there was the husband who I guess had like some serious anger issues and I assume killed the boy in the bathtub from what we saw and then killed the wife and stuffed her in the closet. One question that we never got the answer to was why was the boy taped in the closet to begin with because Yoko opened that thing and she went up there. So after Yoko opened it up and went up there, like did the ghost tape the closet shut after that? This ghost was just, or this spirit was very strange. It didn't obey any of the normal rules that I think I've come to associate with ghost movies in how it acted, who it targeted. Um, so there were just a huge amount of expectations that were just shattered. But one thing that I wasn't surprised with was that it just, it took everyone out. Like I was, I would have genuinely been shocked if, um, Karen had gotten away at the end. Um, because it's just like, it was very clear that she was dead. Like there's nothing you can do. Oh, what I did want to say was <clears throat> one thing that was much different than most ghost movies was, okay, so in most ghost movies, the journey that Karen goes on would have actually started much earlier and it would have went much more in depth. Um, usually there's a big push in ghost movies for you to know what created the ghost, why they're there, to get other people in on knowing that the ghost is there, and to possibly come up with a way to prevent whatever fate you possibly have in store for you. With this, what was really different was that the ghost knocked people off one by one, but very fast. So there really was no opportunity for any of these people to communicate with each other. You know, the lady, and it, based on how the ghost attacks, it seems like after you see it, you become almost catatonic to where you can't communicate what you've seen. So, you know, the lady, the old lady, um, she was catatonic. She couldn't tell people what had happened to Yoko or Karen or, not Karen, or um, Jennifer or uh, Matthew. Um, and then when it went after Susan, like she was by herself, she never actually interacted with any of the other characters. Um, the professor that we saw, he never interacted with any of the other, uh, 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 any of the other characters, you know, at that point, his par the kid's parents were already dead. I assume the kid or the spirit wasn't even the kid. So like the whole family was already dead, um, Matthew, Jennifer, and Susan never interact with the professor. Uh, you know, they're already dead by the time Karen comes into the picture. It's just like there was no transfer of information among these characters whatsoever. So what's really interesting is because I know there's a grudge too. I saw it on the little recommendation list is that you really can't carry over anything from this movie into the next movie because everyone's just dead and no one had a chance to say anything or write anything down or give anyone any kind of information. That's unusual for ghost movies, really. Like, I've never seen a ghost movie that does that. <laughs> All right, well, anyways, if you enjoyed this, give me a like. If you want to talk to me, comment or hit me up on Discord in the link down below. And if you want to see more, subscribe or full reaction in the description below. Otherwise, I will see you later and bye-bye.